Sometimes I wonder if it's luck or if it's just the result of being stubborn. Well, I never thought I would have the opportunity to be in this situation right here. I'm Russell Moore, and this is my bluegrass story. First Saturday night of every month, there was a show just outside of Cleveland, Texas, uh, at a place called the Blue Barn, and, and that's, we got a lot of exposure to bluegrass music there, and I even saw people coming through like uh, the Lewis family and, and uh, Larry Sparks, the Sullivan family. I started really kind of getting into, okay, this, I'm, I'm intrigued with this a lot. It was really cool to be able to walk up to a jam session and stand right next to somebody who's, who's uh, playing and watch what they were doing. I mean, and, and I'm just right there one-on-one -on -one with just, just listening to the sounds coming out of the instruments that they were able to do. And my mother would, every month, she would order at least a couple of LPs from a uh, mail order catalog. But when she ordered two particular LPs by the Osborne brothers, that was the big turning point, I think, for me. That that was when I, I thought, oh, now that is just so, it's different. The, the song selection, the, the arrangements, were not like a lot of the other things that, that I was listening to with bluegrass music. Bobby Osmond's voice uh, was, it was a bell tone and it was very high and it was and just crisp and clean and, and, and it just floored me uh, to listen to him. I remember thinking to myself that I would be in heaven if if I can make somebody else feel like Bobby makes me feel when I listen to him sing, then I, I, I'd absolutely be the, the happiest guy in the world, you know. Me and a guitar and uh, a Mel Bay instruction and book and record that had, you know, a few songs on it and it had the, the, the diagrams the court, you know, that showed you where to put your fingers on what strings, and and uh, and that's that's actually what I started doing at, at the very beginning when I was interested in learning how to play. This is that uh, mandolin that I played with the the Bluegrass Ramblers of Texas. That was the name of the group. I had left it after a rehearsal. I'd left it on the driveway beside one of the vehicles and. It got ran over, basically, and it crushed the top. There was a, a fellow from East Texas that was a, a luthier and, and built mandolins, and I knew him, and I asked him if he would repair this mandolin because it, at that point, it had already become sentimental, and this is the one that I wanted to play. And he begged me, please, Please just let me build you a new mandolin because it, the neck had been broken out of it. The top was destroyed. And I pleaded with him back and I said, I really want this mandolin. You know, if you could just try to repair this one. So he did. It is still very sentimental to me. This takes me back to that era when I first started playing bluegrass music in an organized band situation. It, it, it's... Uh, a little bit surreal, I guess. When I was a teenager, starting out, when, when I first started playing this man, I would have never, ever dreamed that it would be sitting in the, in the Bluegrass Music uh, Museum. Yeah, I never would have, in a million years, thought that. me in Carolina Well I miss you 
in Tennessee. Do you wish I was there beside you? Well, I wish you were here with me. I know it's not the ideal situation. My heart's become a part of the band. It's a common hazard in the occupation. You know I'll love you just as much as I can. So I'll dream till I hear you love me And I'll hold till I see your smile Wish I could hold Horses, bourbon, and the great outdoors. That's Kentucky. Original, majestic, and wide open. In one day, visit legendary distilleries, explore horse country, or put on your hiking shoes and get out there. This is Kentucky. Come see for yourself. Plan your road trip at KentuckyTourism.com. Hey, everybody, I'm Dan Tominski. My favorite magazine is Bluegrass Unlimited. It can be yours, too. Get your subscription to Bluegrass Unlimited, the monthly print publication of bluegrass music since 1966. Bluegrass Unlimited includes feature articles on bluegrass history and tradition, current artists and bands, and so much more. Subscribe today online at bluegrassunlimited.com. And if you subscribe today using code MYBLUEGRASSSTORY, you'll save 15% of the regular subscription rate. The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatt and Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show, My Bluegrass Story. Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. You know, joined the Bluegrass Ramblers of Texas, and it was while I was there that I actually met uh, Scott Vestal, Curtis Vestal, and um, there was talk between the three of us, myself, Scott, and Curtis, you know, about putting a band together. Let's, let's put a band together. So. Another leap, leap of faith, I, I left Pasadena and I moved to Arlington. We formed a group called Southern Connection. Now, we were there for about a year. We decided we needed to be in the thick of things in, uh, with this music, which was more towards the East Coast. The big festivals 
where the you know the trails would lead you lead you from one festival to another and within a driving range and and you could maybe do it full time. So we basically sold everything we had except for our instruments and and our clothes and four of us headed east. It was hard to get by. Uh, ate a lot of soup beans, you know. Sometimes we'd even have cornbread. We had been there uh, a little less than a year and Doyle Lawson called and said, I'd like to hire th three of you to come work for me in, in my band. So we discussed it a lot and, and, and we thought, well, this is actually a great opportunity for us to uh, just jump into a nationally touring bluegrass band uh, and get to learn some stuff from, from Doyle too. So we, we did. Uh, we dropped everything that we'd been working towards with, with Southern Connection. I was there for six years with Doyle. Here's another leap of faith. When you leave that position and start something new again with as third time out. And here we are, you know, like I said, 30 years later, still traveling roads now that we've, you know, started touring again, the wheels are rolling and people are excited. When I first met you, darling, my heart was on the go Searching for a lady That my arms could hold And now that I have found you My world is like a dream Made real by your presence And at times it still seems that I'm dreaming of you Even though you're right here in my arms I can't believe it's true And when time has aged our faces And while others start anew don't you worry about me, darling I'll still be loving you You know at times I take for granted The words you need to hear But for me to ever hurt you Is more than I can bear so I'm telling you the way I feel Cause I want you to know When you're lying here beside me It seems as if though I'm still dreaming of you Even though you're right here in my arms I can't believe it's true And when time has aged our faces And while others start anew Don't you worry about me, darling I'll still be loving you Don't you worry about me, darling I'll still be loving you. That particular song, yeah, that I wanted to express myself through a song and tell her exact, you know, just how I felt about her. Well, it again that. That particular song was was written over a span of quite a while. I mean, I, I don't remember exactly how long it took me to write it. We were actually living in 
Georgia at this time, but it had started, I'd started writing the song when we, when we were living in, in Bristol, Tennessee. And, and then I finished it up later uh, while, I was, while we were in Georgia. I was nervous, I guess, because I didn't want her to be disappointed uh, in, in the message or in the lyrics or, and she wasn't. Uh, she, she was not disappointed whatsoever. She absolutely loved it, thought it was beautiful. I didn't care if anybody else liked it, just as she did. If she liked it and she knew it was, it was real and it was honest, uh, that's all I cared about. In the heart of bluegrass country, on the banks of the Ohio River, there's a place where healthcare is different, where it's woven into the very fabric of our local communities, where doctors practice more than medicine. They practice living. Here, everyone cares for the patient and treats them like a neighbor because they are one. This place is called Owensboro Health, where a healthier community is what we do. There's a city where a river of music flows, where you're invited to discover its deep roots in bluegrass music and heritage and harmonies converge. It's a community that's just like the music it's home to, welcoming and authentic. This is Owensboro, Kentucky. This is the bluegrass music capital of the world. On June 22nd to 25th, 2022, Romp Festival takes place in Owensboro, Kentucky. Produced by the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, Romp features four days of music, camping, jamming, and much more. Immerse yourself in bluegrass music by experiencing live performances from over 25 artists. Plan your trip to Romp Festival in Owensboro, Kentucky on June 22nd to 25th, 2022. More information about Romp can be found at rompfest.com. The connection between the artist and the fans. Even as an artist, I was a fan to begin with. I was a fan at first. That connection that we have is, is a real thing because bluegrass is, is more of a uh, interactive with the audience kind of music. We don't get off the stage and, and get escorted by security back to the tour bus and, and uh, stay away from the crowds and all. We, we actually interact with them. They've been fans for years and years and years and they continue to support us. One reason that they do that and attend the festivals is because if you come to a, a bluegrass fest and it's your first time. You're gonna be a small fish in a big pond and you're gonna start doing like everybody else does and feeling the same way because that's, that's one of the endearing things about uh, this music and the fan base. They're, they are friends. A lot of them know each other and, and they, they, they see each other several times throughout the year. Fan base at Romp is, is really to me, it's, it's more unique than a lot of the places that we perform at. Uh, and I think one reason is because the music lineup at the Romp is very diverse. I mean, I get as much enjoyment watching the other groups, much as the people, you know, standing in front of the stage. It was uh, really unique to, to, to watch the crowd there at the Romp Festival and see how engaged they were with all of the bands that performed there, and uh, as well as I, I really was. It was a, it was a great, it was a great time. I look forward to going back, hopefully sometime. My mind's made up.
and for her like an old hound dog with his nose stuck right to the ground. But I don't have a clue and there's just no trace of this woman that don't want to be found. I miss the way she talks, the way she wiggles, when she walks. I miss her southern charm. If I could turn back time, a better man she'd find and she'd be right here in my arms. My mind's made. Love is too rough, baby, I've had enough I'm leaving you in Fort Worth too This love is too rough, baby, I've had enough The Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, located in beautiful Owensboro, Kentucky, is your destination for bluegrass music. With interactive exhibits, you'll learn about the early innovators of the music, like Bill Monroe and Flatt and Scruggs, but you'll also discover the artists of today who are following in their footsteps. But that's just the beginning. Experience the music behind the exhibits by playing music in our pickin' parlor and by enjoying a live show in our beautiful theater. Appearing soon at the Hall of Fame, Darren and Brooke Aldridge on April 23rd, Daly and Vincent on May 6th, and Dan Tominski on May 14th. Use the promo code on your screen to save on concert tickets at bluegrasshall.org. And when visiting the Bluegrass Music Hall of Fame and Museum, be sure to check out the exhibit highlighting the artists featured on the television show, My Bluegrass Story. Plan your trip to Owensboro, Kentucky today and discover your bluegrass story. Learn more at bluegrasshall.org. American Patriot Getaways has cabin rentals in Gatlinburg for any group size or budget. From a romantic studio for two to a 13 bedroom chalet, we can help you make memories any time of year. Break away from the everyday and take in the fresh mountain air from our cabin rentals in Gatlinburg and Pigeon Forge. Enjoy luxurious amenities like a steamy hot tub, exciting game room, breathtaking views, or even a private indoor pool. Find your favorite cabin rentals in Gatlinburg today. I'm not done. Uh, too much enjoyment left uh, to realize uh, with uh, playing music on the road. I mean, I'm, I still enjoy traveling. Uh, we probably slowed down a little bit from what we our tour schedule used to be years ago. Uh, but that's okay. I, I don't mind slowing down a little bit. But I, I want to do some recording. I want to document the lineup in the group as it is right now, because I'm really excited about it. Maybe uh, reach out to some newer, uh, or some new venues for us, and uh, try to expose ourselves to uh, some new people, some new fans, and bring them into the fold, you know. I'd love to do that. I don't know how, how many years that uh, I've got left. I have, you know, I'm not trying to figure that out. I'm just enjoying what it is right now. I've seen so many things and experienced so many things through music and my travels. Uh, I would love to be able to take some time, uh, at least slow down enough where I had the time to take my wife and go show her some of the things that I've been able to experience. Down in South Alabama, where the cypress trees grow, there lived a man named John looking for a wife, so the town he did go. It was there he found sweet Mary, and they made their wedding plans. The next Sunday morning, when the church bells rang, they were standing hand in hand, and the preacher said, John, do you take Mary for your wife? And he said, And as far as my legacy, man, I just, I just hope people understand that it was my pleasure and my joy. Uh, as much as you enjoyed it, it was my pleasure and my joy to perform and get to share my musical side with them. 
Now when the sun comes up in the morning, they look into each other's eyes. And the love and the faith they see in each other, no one can deny. And the little baby boy she holds in her arms shows the power when you pray. And every night on the knees, they thank the Lord above for giving them that day. When the people said, John, do you take Mary for your wife? And he said, oh, yes, Lord, for the rest of my life. The preacher said, Mary, do you love this man in front of you? And she said, oh, yes, Lord, forever I'll be true. 